is a health show, a lifestyle show, and an empowerment show rolled into one. Get ready to hear some stories of success, healthy living tips, and suggestions to get motivated and live your best life. Now, here is your host, Ann Peel. Welcome everyone to the show tonight. I am so excited to have you join us. We have a wonderful guest tonight. We actually wanted, and I say we because I have Dr. Jim Slaughter here too. Hey everybody. He's co-hosting with me. We wanted to share with you something incredible that's happened in our community. And um, there is actually one person, Mr. Jason Ma Mallow Whiskey. Perfect. <laughs> Jason Mallow Whiskey. He has headed up and spearheaded just a, a community drive for our for Azel. But then other people joined in, right? Not just Azel. And uh, to help the hurricane victims. Now I wanted to have him on tonight because in with yeah. yes, in Houston. We started off with the Harvey, um, Hurricane Harvey victims. Right. And um, but then in light of Florida and Hurricane Irma. I just knew I wanted to let everyone know, let you know what Jason has done and how our community got so fired up um, to help out. And I know there's people out there that want to help the victims Absolutely. of Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Harvey victims still need help too, right, Jason? Correct. So Jason is here, and um, we're going to tell you a little bit about him. Um, he actually works for the Department of Defense, but he is actually located at Lockheed Martin. Correct. Right. So in his free time, he is the executive director of Servolution Community Network and Good Neighbors in Azel, Texas. And he sparked a revolution through serving in our community, raising incredible amounts of money, goods, and volunteers for Hurricane Harvey victims in the Houston area. Now, when I say an incredible amount, I, I wanted to try to post video of all the, you know, uh, huge tractor trailers and 18-wheelers and U-Hauls and I mean how many were there actually Jason that first day that went down to Houston? Uh, so we had a uh, semi truck and a 48 foot flat, flatbed trailer uh, filled with thousands of bottles of water. We had two 28 foot, 26 foot U-Haul trucks and we also had seven uh, trucks pulling trailers that went down uh, with a police escort by Azel PD. So one car in the front, one car in the back took us all the way down there safely. Well, and you know what? I mean, it was so incredible that the community got involved. And then how in the world? Okay. I mean, because like grocery stores, I mean, I know Brookshire's and Ace Hardware and people like the 18-wheeler, the, um, somebody let you borrow. Yes. Like, yes. here, use this truck to go to Houston, this giant truck. And then you guys filled it from Brookshire's with I don't know how many, I don't know how many bottles of water. I mean, if you can go on the Facebook for Servolution Network, Correct. Um, and you can see it all, and you can go on our Facebook, uh, Living Well with Ann Beal, uh, just Ann Beal Facebook, and you can see it. Uh, but mine doesn't have anywhere near as much as you go to the Servolution Network Facebook. Um, so Jason, welcome to the show. We're glad to have you here. Thank you very much for having me, man. So we want to know, we, Jim and I want to know all about you. So can you just share like where you're from, how in the world did you get from Department of Defense to Servolution? How did you get to Department of Defense? I actually thought you worked for Lucky. Um, so on my Facebook, I said you worked for Lucky, but it's actually the Department of Defense at Lucky. Correct. For the fighter jets? F-35. Yes. And you're there because of all the money the government is spending on those? Yes, we're yeah. required to do government oversight. Okay, so how in the world? First of all, you're not from Azel. No. Where was, were you originally from? I was born in a little town called Denmark, Wisconsin, uh, just uh, south of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, and I was raised by a single mom, um, lived in a small apartment, and uh, we always uh, were, were in need. And I think it's kind of my mission in life to, to help the people that were in my shoes, if you will, back then, right. uh, succeed. You know, enable them to to live uh, lives that they're called to, to live. Well, it's amazing the kinds of things that we pick up and and learn outright. You know, from our growing up years, and uh, everybody carries something into their adulthood with them from the past. And uh, I think growing up in a small town like that, 
can serve a person really well, you know, with values and things that uh, are so important uh, for serving later on in their lives. Yes. So I grew up in a small town community, like I said, uh, but I didn't have uh, I didn't have much of a bright future. So in between my junior and sophomore year, I signed up actually to join the Navy. Uh, and four weeks after I graduated high school, I uh, went off to boot camp. Wow. Uh, went to Great Lakes, and uh, I was in the Navy for almost six years. Uh, I joined the Navy from Green Bay to go see the world, and they actually yeah. sent me to Grand Prairie, Texas. <laughs> I'm so sorry. To uh, Naval Air Station Dallas. Yes. So everything, you know, kind of the the motto I'll say is everything happens for a reason. So I, you know, I wanted to go see the world. Sent me to Grand Prairie. Um, we actually closed that Navy base down and moved over to Fort Worth. Uh, and you know, as as it would play out, uh, I went to night school and I, I met my wife in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. And uh, after about seven years, I got commissioned in the Air Force. Actually, I switched services, wow. and my wife and I traveled around some. And my job in the military, uh, in the Air Force now, was a program manager uh, to acquire goods and services from the biggest defense contractors that we have uh, in the U.S. So I've kind of learned how to build relationships and how to network and how to integrate uh, different functions to get things done. So I think I've kind of been trained how to uh, integrate people together. Um, somewhere around 2004, uh, my wife and I got plugged into a church um, and we really felt uh, what what drove us to church actually was was we were trying to have children and we couldn't. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, after about seven years together, uh, we couldn't. So, you know, we got to the point to where we were looking for any answers, uh, and, and it just we just got drawn into church, and uh, we got uh, mentored by some great uh, Christian leaders at our church, and it was phenomenal. And we. Kind of one of the things uh, throughout the military is you get plugged into a church and then every three or four years you've got to, what we say, love them and leave them, right? They train you how to get deeply immersed and then you got to go somewhere else and do it over. So you kind of learn and you're, you're forced to adapt and, and make new friends, you know? What church was it that you guys in 2004 started at? Uh, it was Beaver Creek Christian Church in Dayton, Ohio. Dayton? Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, Ohio. How about here in Grand Prairie? In Grand Prairie? Was there a church in Grand Prairie? No, we were not. So our first, uh, my first Navy assignment, I was not going to church. So at right. all, uh, just kind of living in the world. So in, in Dayton, Ohio, did you, were you saved? Is that yes, where you, yes, oh, 2004. Goodness. How old were you? I was, oh, jeez. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, 27, I think. 27. 27. So that really 49. changed your life. Yes. Well, I know you're really plugged in now with Church of Hazel. Yes. And um, very involved. And in a very short amount of time. I mean, you've only been in this community, what, a year and a half? No. Uh, we got here in 2012. So that was five years. Five, five years ago. We got here in 2012 and kind of spent the first year we were here kind of lost, trying to figure out where to get plugged in. Mm -hmm. uh, and we we went uh, to the church at Azel in 2013. And uh, our past assignment, as I was sharing with you guys earlier, we were in Oklahoma City. And uh, we were part of a church that was a Servolution church. So if you rewind a little bit, uh, Servolution started uh, in Louisiana in response to Hurricane Katrina. Oh, I did not know that. So currently, <clears throat> currently today, there's roughly 450 churches across the whole world that are Servolution churches. So in 2013, now I've come back to where we were. Uh, I wore a T-shirt from Oklahoma City to our church, and Pastor Chad Geisland, who's now our lead pastor, said, "What is that?" And him and I got to talking. And uh, he just challenged me to do something with it. I was looking for a place to serve, but uh, it's very difficult to serve at church with five children and not feel like you're a burden. Right. So kind of outreach was where I kind of felt called to go. Um, so it's, it really started, <clears throat> ironically, in a bathroom. We had a couple in our church that we were doing life groups, right? And they, were, they needed some help putting together a bathroom. Oh, okay. So I'm so glad that's what that's you right. did. I'm no, so they, could host, so they could host yeah. life groups, right? So that was my first chance ah. to um, round up some volunteers to do a job they really didn't want to do, but they did it with love and kindness and compassion. Uh, so our first kind of project as a church was to, to build a bathroom for this couple. And we kind of mi uh, did ministry to our own church body for the first year we were there. 
And kind of what I tell everybody, kind of the story of, of our solution here is crawl, walk, run. So we, we crawled for the first year over and over and over until we kind of figured out what we wanted to do, you know, gain some new people, lost some people, gain some people. And uh, the beauty of, of Servolution here in Hazel, Texas is it's, I tell people all the time, if you want to come join us, be a part of it. Whatever your passion is, that's what we'll go do. If you're not passionate about it, then I don't want you to lead something. If right. that makes sense. So we've done a couple programs since we did that first bathroom, and what what kind of um, so that that eventually evolved in what we call our good neighbors program now, to where we fix up houses in the community uh, every April and October, and uh, we're having one here in a couple weeks where we'll uh, revitalize seven homes in two days, uh, six in Azel, and then one. This will be our first house in a different community. Uh, we'll go up to Springtown and we do, it's mainly a, a curb appeal program, if you will. So it's siding, it's painting, it's windows, it's landscaping, all that kind of stuff. Um, we also do and painting, a, like painting, painting right? Because like, yes. I know you've done one right up the street. Um, I thought you did two, only because one looks very similar to the one you finished. So I thought, did they do that one too? Uh -huh. um, but now you're going to do seven in a weekend? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so back to the house, that's a good point, back to the house you just said. So kind of one of the things they talk about uh, in the Servolution book that was written uh, on Hurricane Katrina is it's not an event, it's a culture, right? So with the Good Neighbors program, you want to turn, the goal is kind of to turn the people that you serve into servants someday and to change, for the Good Neighbors program, we're hoping to change communities and neighborhoods. Right. So we did a house in an April Blitz and the neighbors watched us the whole time as we parked in their yard and then come October she applied through the city and then we did her house right next door. That's what I would do. So it's kind of, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, right. it's been it's amazing. It's catching. It's, it's catching, yes. Yes, and it yeah. was so beautiful. And, and so for you now, because I've seen your, you know, the people for that house, um, how many people were out there. And so I'm just thinking, okay, you're going to do seven. Is that because you have seven times the amount of volunteers? So yeah, so we're you know we're we're praying faithfully that people will come. Uh, last time we had, and, and by no means am I trying to brag. It's been it's been a, a God thing. It's been amazing, but we had 17 different churches represented from not only Azel but our surrounding communities, and um, it, it's just been amazing. We had I think 550 some odd people come and volunteer uh, to work on the last house we did during the last blitz. How many people? Have, now I don't know that you know, but with the whole Hur Hurricane Harvey blitz, I call it like a, like a blitz. I mean, it went from that. You have to tell us how it got from just you to what I saw. I mean, and, and then in the morning, like I really wanted to go to the prayer at, was it at five or six? Six in the morning. Yes. And Jim, I'm playing about Jim. He wasn't, he, he wasn't going to get up. No, I'm just kidding. We did not I make it. And so before yeah. you guys all went on your caravan down the highway, right? And Pastor Miles, had it and he videotaped it yes. and um, and it was just amazing and uh, truly amazing and then since then there's been more amazing with more tractor trailers and hay and I mean I just can't even believe it um, and so how did it start how did you get from working on homes and you know the good neighbors program to oh I'm gonna send some stuff down for Harvey so we started with good neighbors and I think we just, we had about two and a half years ago the idea to partner with other nonprofits in Azel to, that are already doing things great to help them do things better. So we have something simple, but it's, it's really, I think, set the stage for this. We, we call it our Fill the Bin Drive. So we help the Eagle Mountain Pregnancy Help Center, we help the Community Caring Center. No strings attached. We collect for them, we give them stuff so they can do their job better. So we've, we've prepositioned bins throughout our community for people to go drop off donations. And it's big. That, the bin that's at the church is big. Yes. I mean, it's, it's not a small bin. And we, we had people donate us. Once Once we did our first couple ones with little plastic bins that are rinky-dink, mm -hmm. uh, we actually had a business donate us custom-made plexiglass, aluminum, fancy oh, bins. So we've got them in about 12 <laughs> different spots in our community. So kind of what... That. Do you mind if I ask? It is... You um, I'm sorry. No, I didn't. I'm just catching up talking. Yeah. That's amazing. That's wonderful. Cinemation Designs. There you go. Cinemation, Cinemation Designs made it. So, so at the Church at Azel, the people who built all the stage for us, mm -hmm. uh, it's brand new. They've actually done another church in Azel as well. 
and they had all these different scraps and cutoffs, and they used all of their scraps to build us these bins. Wow. How about that? So we've been doing the fill the bin drive now for about two years, and we collect for all these different nonprofits. So I think that's kind of, if you will, train the community that we collect stuff and we give it to people in need. And they know yeah. you truly do that. Correct. And that's this might be a good time to make a point of that, you know, because you, you were raising the, the point earlier when we were talking that uh, you have to kind of train the community and it takes years and years usually to make them believe that you're going to do what you say you're going to do and you're going to fulfill your promises. You're going to, if money comes in, the money goes out to who you say it's going to go to. If goods come in, clothing, food, water, whatever, it's going to go to the people you say it's going to go yes. to. And they're not going to let it sit on the shelf for a couple of years. So the people don't, don't get the don't get the help, right? Correct. Correct. And I think that really, for me, goes back to the military. For me, core values in the Air Force are excellence in all you do, service before self, and integrity, integrity above everything. So, for me, uh, to instill values where people believe what you say you're going to do is what you actually do. I think that's really where this where this drive to help Hurricane Harvey victims uh, has come to fruition. And then the third program that I think we do is, is Pay It Forward, where we collect gently used furniture and appliances and we give it away to families in our community for free. Oh. So now I you think have big trucks for that. I've seen them. We they do. say we, Pay It Forward <clears throat> for those donations as well. We just, uh, we had a huge truck donated last year to us. I mean, it's, it's, I have so many blessings that I can share that I think the more we give, the more we get, if that makes right. sense. And it's just been yeah. amazing. It does. So kind of, if you fast forward a little bit now to this past week when the hurricane hit, one of the ladies, uh, her name is Barbara Pace, where we have a fill the bin drive at her location, um, just called me and said, hey, what can we do? And I, to be totally honest, I had not even thought a second about it because right. even though we're in Texas, it's so far away, I was concerned about our own family members who are down there, but I wasn't thinking about, as a community, what we can do. So she called me and said, what can we do? And I said, I don't know. Let me pray about it. And let me make a few phone calls and see what we can do. Um, so, so that's one of our fill the bin locations. The next morning, uh, you know, I just I really felt convicted that hey, we've we do stuff for our community. Why can we not do something here? So I just reached out to our biggest fill the bin location, if you will, to Mark Loudenheimer at Brookshire's and said, Hey, what do you think we can do? You know, I know you guys run a lot of product through your store. Do you think we can do something? So this yeah. is a grocery store. This is a grocery store in the right country. Here. Yes, yes, it's a, it's it's one of the bigger grocery stores here in our little community, and uh, we've been very successful in our fill the bin drive there. Whether it's to help with babies, whether it's been to help with elderly, and he said, "Yeah, I think we can do something." So I was like, "All right, well, I've got you know I've got a at least a business in town that's willing to help us." Uh, so the next day, I called uh, a buddy of mine who owns a little U-Haul store, and I said, "Hey, what do you think we can do? Do you think?" Think we can use one of your trucks and, and take it down to Houston somewhere? So they are. Right. He said, "Yeah, that sounds like a great idea." It was wine at the time. Wine. So our, so our, when we started, and mind you, all this kind of threw together in a week. Wow. We were going to take one 26-foot U-Haul and our Servolution cargo trailer uh, down there with four or five guys. Um, and then once once we got that kind of domino to fall, we had goods and we had a truck. Then we got another one of our fill the bin locations, which is Kingdom Cuts Barbershop. Uh, and it, it's a marvelous story because it's two guys who are Christians. Who would think a barbershop could, could help unite a community? But these guys are on fire. They promote it. People follow them. People contribute because, because why? Because they trust them. Because they trust what they donate to them is going to go to people in need. Goodness. So we kind of had our team formed, if you will. And then we just used uh, the horsepower of social media to just put the word out there. We had a couple distinct drop locations being at the U-Haul place so we didn't have to move stuff twice. And then we drove, I mean, we really drove our community to go to Brookshire's and people just went there hand over fist and just donated. And, and you know how, we, how I said we used to have these little plastic donation bins to collect stuff? We have this huge bin at Brookshire's now. Right. We don't even... For the most part, weren't even putting anything in it last week because we were collecting so much stuff that it was frankly a waste of time and effort to put in the bin because we were instead of collecting by the bin, we we're collecting by the pallet. And people were outside. I mean, we actually went to the U-Haul place, and then they were telling me, you know, we took a bunch of stuff. Then they were telling me what else they needed for animals. So I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even think about animals. And they were saying leashes, and I was like, oh, because I knew a lady 
that her daughter worked for a company in design with leashes and stuff like that for dogs. So, and so I called her up and I'm like, guess what they need? And she was like, done. And so she had like 60 leashes. I mean, she was all this stuff. So we turned around and brought it back. And so we kept hearing more about stuff. And, and so then we heard about Brookshire's and we went over there. The next day people were just lined up dropping off stuff. So it, that's how I thought, you know, but even then, I didn't know how many trucks, right, when you started going down to Houston, lined up, heading down 199 Highway. That was so exciting, watching the video of all of that cavalcade going down, and you guys had a convoy. Mm -hmm. Convoy, there, that's the right. On one way. end, and the other end, by police and escort, and it was impressive to see the guys going down there and, and what you had going. Yes, it was amazing. So how did it come about? The guy who loaned you the 18-wheeler to take, and then Brookshire's filled up. Like, that was a 48-foot trailer. Is that right? Yes. I was trying to figure it out. And, like, that thing is big. And so Ace Hardware and Brookshire's are the ones who filled that up? Yes. That was amazing. And so I don't know how much that would have cost, you know, all, all of that. Because it was Gatorade, and it was water, and it was food as well, right? Yes. Um, how in the world... How did you do that? And I know it's not you, I know, but you know what? You, 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 this is one thing, guys. Ask. You asked. You asked these people for help. You let them know what you were doing. And I do know that if, you can't get help if you don't ask. Right. And I think that's, that's one of the biggest lessons that I think I've learned is it takes courage to ask, but asking is required. Absolutely required. Um, and I, let me tell you a little bit of the story and kind of how this has evolved. So, I had told you that Servolution started in response to Hurricane Katrina. So I told you we started at the Church at Azel, and we used to be called Servolution TCAA, Servolution the Church at Azel, right? And as I had the, started to have the vision, right, our slogan right now is let's build community together. A lot of people, frankly, didn't want to partner with one church because then it was going to raise up that one church, and not everybody wanted to donate their money to one church. Yeah. So we had, we had some evolution, if you will, and we have, we have made a strategic move to call it, to change the name from Servolution TCA to Servolution Network. And kind of the, the beauty that's happened before my own eyes is, is the power of the network can produce results like we had this past week. Because frankly, in a network, nobody gets all the credit, right? And, right. and you know people that I don't know, and this business owner knows people I don't know, and this church has people that go to their church that I don't know. But when you start calling on people and it just, the network kind of grows and grows and grows like a spider web, big, thing ha big things happen that, that I can't even really explain. I mean, I wish I, I wish I would have drawn up day by day how last week went, where we started with a box truck and then on day two we realized we had to have another box truck. And then by Wednesday, right, we're, we had planned to leave on Saturday. By Wednesday, we were putting feelers out everywhere. Where in the world can we get a semi truck, right? So we... So on Wednesday, we put the word out, and by Thursday, or Wednesday night, I had Bo Gideons had, had yes. volunteered to drive the semi-truck. So he committed Wednesday night, and by Thursday morning, I had three more people say, hey, we'll drive a semi-truck. Wow. I mean, it's been... So that was that Bo's truck? That was Bo oh, Gideons' God, truck. Oh, God, because I was like, who let somebody borrow their 18-wheeler? Okay, so that Bo's So his, his truck, truck was the perfect truck, oh if you will. Gosh, yes. They had a, they had a, I don't know if you even saw the pictures, but they had a lit-up cross on the front of the I truck. We that did, was yeah. Lit. We saw it. It was the perfect truck. Right. It was the perfect truck. And then so you got another one? Another, another so we one? didn't need it, right? But we put it in the queue. Okay? Okay. So, we, so we took, um, so if you fast forward a little bit to Saturday morning, um, no, actually Wednesday, right? So we're, we have so many materials. And right, we're leaving Saturday. We know we're going to South Texas. We didn't even have a destination yet. This had all happened so fast. We collected so much stuff. Now we've got to figure out where to take it. Right. So... Pause that for a second. Our local Briarino firefighters are down in Lamarck, Texas, right on the border. And they were stranded, right? They were stranded. I mean, they were first in, even before the federal government, and we wanted to help them. So I reached out to Brookshire's again, and uh, they were actually sending a second wave of people down there. So we were able to equip the second wave of people with food to take directly to them down in Lamarck. Was that a second wave of firemen or a second? Yes, second well, wave of firemen, yes. yes. So... So I had reached out to Pastor Mike Miles and said, hey, where in the world can we go? And he said, hey, I, I've got a good friend in Deer Park, Texas. I think you should go there. So his name was Pastor Doug Harris. He actually pastored a church west of our church up here in Agnes uh, for 11 years. So he's, he's kin to this area, if you will. 
Um, now he was he's actually south of Houston. He's so south, he's much he's, closer yes. like Rockport and yes. the places that flows yes. first. Mm -hmm. So as amazing. it as it turns out, he's only thirty miles from where our firefighters were. Wow. wow. So there was you know the whole region of South Texas was affected, but we were able to go kind of the same location that our local guys uh, had went. So Saturday morning comes right. We do a prayer. And I mean, it's just overwhelming to know the amount of support, collections, the people that sacrifice so many hours to package it, to sort it, to donate. I mean, we had probably 150 donors. Everything we asked for, the need was met and, and even over above some. I was asking for Ziploc bags, donation bins, garbage bags. Samples for shampoo and conditioner. Yes. I saw the girls, I saw the women and the, even their kids, you know, uh, taking the shampoo and putting it in smaller bottles because I brought shampoo and conditioner, big bottles, right? Yes. And I saw them doing that. I'm like, oh no, I need to ask for samples. So I came back and this guy, come, I, you know, I put it on Facebook for our neighborhood and he came over with, I don't even know how he got so many. I didn't ask, but he had this huge box and bags of really cool samples, samples yeah. of all shampoo, <clears throat> conditioner, baths, whatever. So I, I ran those over there. But what I found was, you know, people are more cautious about giving now. And, and being able to, to, to actually get involved and give directly. I had a lady that called me up, she had a wheelchair. And she said, I have a wheelchair I can donate. I had people saying they had stuff for broken legs and casts, you know, the, um, you know they needed medical equipment. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm sure they do. And so, so many people were excited to be a part. And, um, you know, in our, our neighborhood is a small neighborhood, but compared to just watching more and more, I mean, this really fired up people because really people do want to help. Yes, and I think it's really the, the slogan we came up with a couple years ago was sort of coming to fruition, right? Community to us really is we believe wholeheartedly that united we can do more, we can reach more, we can serve more, and we can love more. And I think that it's amazing how much our little community, right, 15,000 people, just love each other. And I think it, it, it just transferred in what happened last week. So how, so I know that you, how many trucks ended up all going down together? So the first wave had the semi truck, two U-Hauls, and then I believe it was seven trucks and trailers. Seven trucks and trailers. Then that followed with more because I saw on the Servolution Network that a guy donated a huge, like, 48-foot trailer for you guys with round bells of hay, yes. filled up for horses. And we took some horse lead ropes that we had, and I said, I don't know if you need those. They're like, oh, yeah. And they needed horse feed. And I mean, I just envisioned animals running around everywhere from listening to them. Right. But so, that, and that wasn't even all the hay that was round bales of hay that was donated. Right, so so people think humans are the big need, right? We took the first wave, we took down uh, dog food, but I think, you know, when we got home, people still wanted to give, so we asked the city for more space. And they said, sure, here's some more space to collect. So we've been still collecting uh, this past week. We sent uh, a truck and trailer full of tools down to Viter, Texas. Wow. Um, where they're having to muck out houses, which I didn't even know what mucking out was. Sounds like getting the mud out. It is, it is. We know so, what mucking out is. Yeah, because of our barn. <laughs> right, yeah. so it's sort of that same thing, right? So when these houses are flooded, the church we're helping in Viter was under eight or nine feet of water. So all of the insulation, all of the sheetrock in the walls has to be mucked out. Yeah. And you just pull all this stuff out and throw it on, you know, you got to put it all on the front curb. So we've had people that went with us. So this is, this is kind of the... Turn the people you serve with uh, into true servants. So one of the ladies that went with us on trip one was absolutely moved and came back on fire to do even bigger and better things. So she's, she has single-handedly uh, gotten a whole trailer load of lumber donated. Well, uh, I saw that. Gotten, I mean, that's a huge trailer. Yes, and they are headed down. So they will be there tonight, actually, in Aransas mm -hmm. Pass, which is right on the water in mm -hmm. South Texas. Uh, so she got lumber donated from Lowe's. Generators donated from Lowe's. She's been going to to pawn shops, to yard sales, and people are just sh filling their vehicles up with tools. Now, who's this woman? Her name is uh, Amanda Steele. Amanda Steele. What a she's great awesome. name. No yes. And so that's exciting because she's taken it upon herself to just yes. go around and ask. Yes. How in the world did you get the police involved? I mean, they actually they followed you and went before you, like Correct. you know, all the way down to Houston. 
Correct. So I think that's. I think it kind of goes back to the beauty of the network, right? We do. <clears throat> I think in a nutshell, this is this is ministry that is in the relationship business, if you will. So so we treat everybody kindly and fairly and equally. And I did not even ask Police Chief Pippins for an escort. But I think he saw, as it was growing, he reached out to me and said, hey, do you think you need a police, court, police escort? Mm -hmm. So that was Wednesday, and he said, yes, I think we'll send one squad car with two officers. And by Friday, I mean, he had more officers wanting to go with us. No uh, so we actually sent... Um, and that, you know what, and I hadn't thought about that until now, but that's actually with all the supplies that you were taking down. And everything. I mean, it could have gotten. Oh yeah, you become taken. a target, yes. right? This is yeah. ministry here in our heart, but right. but you easily become a target, you know. And we had uh, we had the community prayer. We had absolutely no issues with anything on our convoy as far as flat tires or incidents That's or. Amazing. You know, I was thinking uh, about you guys going down there and and, uh, and and going to supply the firefighters who were already first responders there, right? I was thinking well, how cool it would be to be one of those firefighters and you're running out of stuff and all of a sudden know that your own community was mm -hmm. coming, they were on their way to bring right. supplies to you. Right. They didn't even have food. I didn't get, they were like, no food, right? right? That was amazing. So I think it goes back to, it, again, for me personally, it just goes back to my military roots. So I've been deployed before. I've been, I've been alone where you're separated from your family. Even though the, their hurricane relief was only a week duration at the time we went down there, you're still ripped out of your house, away from your family. And, uh, you know, one of the things Pastor Mike challenged me with three years ago, so we're about to have our third annual first responders banquet. Right. So I'm a veteran, right? And he challenged me to love on our first responders. So that, that's really what started our, our network, if you will, with, with the city officials, with the mayor, with the police chief, with these uh, first responders. So it's, it's kind of in our blood to serve those who serve us. Um, so when we went down to Deer Park, uh, we actually made a point to go visit our local first responders and I've been getting, you know, just text messages just saying thank you, how awesome it was, just to, just to know people, even, like I said, it, it's only been a week, but you really feel like nobody's paying any attention when you're right there in the middle of it. They had a group, I believe it was eight guys that were sent down there from our local uh, Briar Reno Fire Department and they from what I've been told, had 220 water rescues just for that team. Wow. wow. That's good. Night. That's wonderful. Wow. And, and so that was just eight guys. Eight guys. That's truly one person can make a difference. Yeah. Yeah, and absolutely. Uh, absolutely. that's amazing. So we are going to take a break. But when we get back, I have so many things. Like, one, I heard uh, this lady talking, and of course she put a letter on Facebook, um, saying, the hurricane victims do not need your stuff. Nobody has a place to put anything. Everything is, you know, they don't have, they don't have a place to store anything. Don't send stuff, only send money. And I was like, now that, that is not completely right, right? And so I wanted to, we're going to go to break. Um, when we get back, I'd love you to talk about that. Okay. And we'll go on about everything that Jason Malou, Malou, I guess you're Malowski, <laughs> is going to do, everything he's going to continue doing because I know you still have more stuff. So you guys stay right here, and we'll be right back. Life Solutions Coaching and Counseling in Hazlitt, Texas is a full-service wellness clinic providing individual, group, and family counseling, one-on-one -on -one coaching for life and wellness, and naturopathic treatments of medical massage therapy combined with essential oils to ensure you reach your health and wellness goals. The sessions are available in person or by phone. Get started on your new life today. Just call 817-232-1363 or go to LifeSolutionsCoachingCounseling.com or email them at LifeSolutions cc at yahoo.com you are listening to living well with ann beal we'd love to hear from you with comments and questions about the show please send us an email to a b living well at gmail.com that's a b living well at gmail.com now back to this week's show welcome back guys we are not taking phone calls this week because Jason from Starvolution has so much to tell us. I mean, he's done so much, so we didn't want the calls to take up the show. So please email us, go to Facebook, 
to Anvil Facebook or Living Well with Anvil website. Um, Jason, tell them how to reach you. So uh, we have a website now, so we're growing, right? So we started from a couple people in a church to now we've got uh, we've got one part-time paid paid employee, which is big news for us. Yeah. Uh, and we're trying to grow, right? We've got a website, www.servolutionnetwork.com, and you can check it out on there. We try and do a good job of listing all the different programs I've mentioned so far. Uh, you can donate online. You can RSVP to things like our first responders banquet, to our good neighbors blitz, where we uh, fix up houses. You can check us out on uh, Facebook at Servolution Network. Um, you can link up with with us on Instagram as well on Servolution Network. So everything is Servolution Network. Everything is Servolution. Okay. Network. Well, that's easy enough. That's easy. Everybody can find you that way. <laughs> that's called that's branding. <laughs> everything be the same. Unlike our wellness clinic, Life Solutions, and this is my show, Living Well. I'm Living Well First, my show. <laughs> and okay, we stole uh, it. That's another story. We steal Living Well. Yes. <laughs> I did brand it, but people use it all the time. And uh, anyway. So, what do you think about what that woman said, saying, you know, the hurricane victims don't need your stuff. They just need your money. They just need your money. So I saw it with my own eyes. Money doesn't buy you stuff when there's no stuff to buy. Well, yes, people there's... need basic things like food and water. It's not like we were taking... So the first trip we went down there, right, we took, I think it was 27 pallets of water. This is a basic... Life needs. Life support. Type not needs. Not plush drapes or carpet or anything. You can, or money, iPhones or anything money like doesn't, that. Money doesn't help when you when there's no gas at the gas pumps, when there's no stuff, when the stores are all demolished. Basic things like food, water, right? So now they're mucking out in cleaning supplies, right? Everybody in the whole community down there needs cleaning supplies. And that's so what the we saw somebody uh, bringing a whole bunch of cleaning supplies and yes. we thought, why are they doing that? Well, that's what the farm, no, but the National Guard out. was asking for that, right? The, the antiseptic for the yes. hands. They were asking for basic things like socks. Socks. Our, our, so that was, right, so one of the cool things that our local community, the local Texas Air National Guard reached out to us, a little nonprofit in Azle, Texas, for socks. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, they were saying hand wipes, antiseptic, and socks. Socks. And so when people yeah. were asking me, they need socks. And so this lady's like, I got socks. She goes, oh, no. I went and bought underwear. Okay, I'm going to go back and buy socks. And so, yeah, in a lot of the places in Florida, the stores were, you know, they, the counters, the shelves were empty. Wiped right? Out. So there's nothing to buy. I know that, um, and I'm not as familiar with northern Florida what happened. But, um, and they will need basic supplies as well, especially down in the Keys. But yes, that's what I was thinking. Now, there were donations of money, and I was, you you had a donation come in that day when I was talking to you, and I think it was $800. Mm -hmm. And you immediately called, what was his name? Brookshire, Mark yeah. Brookshire. You said, Mark, I, I want a, I got $800, I want $800 worth uh, of baby stuff. baby stuff. That's right, because there were women just holding their babies never putting them down they've been holding them for days because they didn't have any kind of they didn't have play pens and they didn't have car seats Diaper. or <laughs> diapers yeah. no yeah. they didn't have anything so with that eight hundred dollars you turn around and spend the whole eight hundred yes. on baby stuff yes. see that's great that's, that's cool great. guys isn't that cool so if you donate to Star Revolution network it all goes back out yes so one of the one of the things so our vision statement is create opportunities for the blessed to be a blessing and I'm, I'm proud and not trying to brag, right, but we, we raised, collectively, I reached out to all these business owners that contributed last week, the big ones, and I said, how much do you think went through your, your stores? And cumulatively, uh, they had told me roughly, I think it was $38,000, and every penny of that went on trucks and trailers down south. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, that's $38,000 each store. Total. Total. Oh, total. Yeah, total. I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> total. That's still so much. Right? Yes. Incredible. Yes. And I know everyone has been blown away. I know you really have been blown away with the, just the generosity and just all the people that were willing to help in your team. Correct. You know, I was dropping off stuff, but I wasn't there packing all the little baggies that you asked for, right? And uh, people refilling little bottles to use as samples, I and mean, they were there for days. So one of the things I've kind of learned, though, is you have to give everybody from 
if you will, from the, the person who's packing this stuff all the way to the rich guy, if you will, a nail to hang their head on to where they feel like they're part of something. Mm -hmm. And uh, no matter, you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't, I don't know how to help. I don't, there's jobs for everybody when you do an exercise like this. So many, so many hands and volunteers are needed and required. I mean, I only, I, I kind of joked, I've only, I only called the party, right? We kind of, we kind of put together the plan, we send out the invites, and the people who showed up, showed up eager and ready to go. Well, and you, you put out a, a kind of a, a red alert to our neighborhood, on our neighborhood did, website yeah. here for people to, to bring stuff. We had people bringing stuff to our house, and yes. then we piled it in our vehicles and took it down to the drop-off zone. Yeah. yeah, and I wish I had known sooner, you know, because I, I was getting stuff and I knew you guys were leaving the next day. And so I was telling people, just bring it, just bring it, like all weekend, Monday. And I even had a, you know, Northwest High School over in Hazlitt, they were taking donations. The kids in one of the uh, leadership clubs started wanting to raise donations and, and get stuff. So I thought, okay, even if you guys are already gone, I can take it down there to Northwest. Right. And so I was kind of surprised at the response. So many people wanted to, I've got to, I got to have some time. Can I bring it by tomorrow? Well, somebody else from Sir Revolution piped in in our neighborhood, I guess, and said, no, they're leaving in the morning. People were like, oh, ah, they're bringing it up at night. I'm like, really? It's okay. Like, and so finally, I guess she called you and said, no, guys, it's okay. All weekend, they have yeah. another truck leaving. Yeah, and so, um, yeah, and I thought, oh, I just didn't, I didn't know early enough to let everyone know. Um, that's part of, I, sometimes I have my head down just working, trudging with all that I do that I obviously didn't see what was going on around me. But once I did that, I mean, in our, our neighborhood's not that big, but I saw people get so excited that they wanted to help. And so, um, and willing anything. They're like, what do they need? And I, I looked on your, because you had this great, you know, um, the flyer, mm -hmm. and then you had it on the church website, and you had on the Facebook, of what you needed. And so I told them that. And some people were still asking clothes. I'm sure. like, I don't know, just bring whatever. And so um, that's why when you just say money, you know, you take a lot of that away from people. It's not personal anymore. No, no. And, 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 and you know, there are people that can donate money. You know, we donated to the Red Cross after 9-11. You know, and that, you know, that was very far away. And so, you, you know, when you can, that's great. That was so smart, though, to go to Mark and say, hey, put this into goods, some kind of goods, and we'll take them down. Well, it's amazing to have that kind of resource, right? Because if I gave yeah. you... If I gave you eight hundred fifty dollars to go to Walmart, it would take you hours. Yeah, it would. And then you got to figure it all out. Oh, you know what? That's so smart. That yeah, was so smart. Yeah, really You're a very smart man. We know this. <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta tell, I gotta tell you though, one of the one of the coolest donations we got, which which was money, but so one of our local elementary schools, uh, one of the guidance counselors got wind of what we were doing. So Hoover Elementary, which is where two of my kiddos go to school, fifth and sixth graders, mind you, one of the little girls gave two dollars and seventeen cents in a bag of and I was able to give it to the pastor down there, but but the point is to give whatever you can, right. no matter how big or small. And that he actually, when I gave it to, uh, I'm cheering up. When I gave it to Pastor Doug <clears throat> down there, he used it in his sermon and just said, "Folks, this is what it's all about. This is when you can engage a whole community to where the kids want to give money to help other kids. That's amazing." That's what really cool. He's tearing up. That's sweet. Oh, that's good. Yes, and. The kids can, you know, and, you know, the heart of a kid is so awesome. And they can, you know, definitely give and help. There were even kids helping. Yes. A lot of the volunteers' kids were there helping. Yes. And squeezing bottles. And yeah, so, um, sure. now, what is happening now? Where are we now? And what can we do? And how can people help you now? Now, we're hoping, guys, if you're listening and you don't live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and um, and you can't get to Servolution right around here, um, Start this in your community. Correct. And you can, even schools, the clubs can start it to raise things. And um, for Irma or Harvey, and there's another one coming, we're hoping it dies out before it gets to the United States. And so, or it would just die out now, that would be great. Um, and so we'd like you to start that. So for you right now, Jason, what do people need in this? What, what do you need? So, Cleaning supplies is the biggest need, but I know you had mentioned earlier, hey, right? So you often hey. think about what people need, but I had somebody just approach approach me and say, hey, I've got all kinds of hay, and we have people that need it. How are we going to get it there? So remember I told you earlier that we had a bunch of semi-trucks that volunteered on day two after we already had one secured, and I just reached out uh, 
to one of those? And they said, yeah, we'll take it. So we're delivering things that we never thought we'd, we'd take, right? We just delivered, I think it was 36 round bales of hay to Eagle Lake, Texas, where I can be honest with you, I have no idea where it is, uh, but they had a need and we had a donor up here and there's still 100 bales of hay. You know, this is a big farming state uh, yeah, right. and the horses, you know, when you when you look at the aerial pictures, the barns and the horses, and they're all on islands, you know, and all the all the hay they had before is now damp and moist, and that's horrible for horses. Yeah. Um, so we're taking things now. The biggest need, really, what I was told just the other day, is volunteers, right? So that so a lot of the places are getting tools and getting supplies, but they don't have volunteers because what a lot of people in South Texas are finding is they weren't covered by flood insurance. Right? They've got insurance, but they weren't covered by flood insurance. So every, all of these houses uh, have to be mucked out. Whether you're rich or whether you're not, your house has got to be mucked out. And there's not enough contractors in the world down there to go muck out all these houses. So they really need people to go down there and help. Yes, and it's a time sensitive because then you're going to have mold and you're going to have all this stuff in the air uh, to get it done. To get it. That's why you got to do it quickly. Yeah. Well, and I have a friend um, from school that is in Florida. And she had her seven horses. She shows English horses and uh, couldn't get out. And she ended up painting on them her phone number and tagged them, everything in case they, mm -hmm. who knows, she was so worried about where they were going to end up, what was going to happen. Um, I haven't actually heard from her yet, so I'm just hoping. But, you know, there are, there are horses. And so, you know, and animals and everything. And so, but cleaning supplies. And then, and then if there are other things. I mean, you wouldn't have thought hay until someone called you about the hay, right? Correct. And so whatever you guys have. You mentioned tools. Get to tools. Tools. Tools, tools are a big need, right? So everything, yeah. tools and building materials. I mean, practical things like two-by-fours and lumber. Okay. Yeah. That's just wonderful. Well, we just thank you so much for coming on and just telling us how people can help out, how people around here can help out. Go into Star Revolution Network on your website, Facebook, Instagram, right? Is there um, a phone number? Because you didn't give a phone number. So right now, because we're small, it's only my own personal cell oh phone number. Goodness. So yes. we'll, we'll go with the website. We'll okay. Go. <laughs> oh, okay, guys. But you can you can contact me, too, on my Facebook or anything like that, and we'll get the information to Jason. Yep. Um, and so... Thank you, Jim, for being on and helping me. My pleasure. With Enjoyed this it. wonderful adventure. And great talking to Jason. Yes, wow. yes. And so we just thank you guys for listening. And uh, the show will be put on iHeart. If you want to have, let anyone else listen to it, you can go to Living Well with Ann Beal podcast on iHeart. And that's where it will be. And uh, we videotapes. So we're going to put it on YouTube. And so just thank you guys. And um, in the meantime, start your own, your own, what can you call it? Servolution Charge. <laughs> yes, yeah, Servolution Charge. Your own Don't. convoy going down to Houston yeah. or to Florida, you know, and just rally the people. Okay? In the meantime, live, live well. well.